Holy smokes. Hey everyone, I want to do a special intro for this video. Uh, I'm calling it, it's like, a, it's like a three or four part series called Gear Set Shenanigans. Because this is infotainment, right? And I am a full on rookie when it comes to setting up gears. But I said I was going to do it anyway. And I make so many mistakes that I couldn't even pretend to pass it off as infotainment. It's just entertainment. Do not take any of this information and use it. But you can see all the mistakes I made starting right now with the first episode. <laughs> sure way to stop your progress in its tracks is to screw up parts you don't have replacements for. <laughs> so this one you probably can't see but I oh yeah you can kind of see there I got the ridge when I was punching it through. So exactly what I told you guys not to do I did. So I'm ordering a new washer. Despite my royal screw up uh, I don't actually need the internals of the carrier to do my ring and pinion setup. I can do it after. I just have to take the ring gear back off. Not a big deal. I did it like three times on the nine inch. So, so uh, yeah, let's keep going. Sorry for the background noise. I got the shop heater, the house heater, all the heaters, you know, it's cold. So I've got this, uh, yeah, that's like the second time. Why does it keep doing that? As I was saying, I got this rebuilt kit from Tom's Bronco Parts. Um, when I ordered this, they only had the regular rebuild kit, so I ended up ordering all my shims and slingers separately. Um, now they have the deluxe rebuild kit. Let's start assembly. Uh, I'm gonna mark, so I have my shims here, and this is 0 .0575, so. Flange side, 0 0.525. Ring gear side. So theoretically, all of these together, which will be point, carry the two. That's my total shim um, total. Total shims in my old carrier all right it's a good starting point but you know that's just how i'll set up this one for the initial initial readings i'm just going to use my old ring gear bolts since they're here and out i'll use the new ones the lock item once i get my in. They say you don't want to draw the gear up into the housing because it kind of makes everything deflect and torque in ways. Point five three five. So point five three five plus seven fifty gets me to twelve. 85, which is five thousandths less, but that's pretty close for starters. Set up bearings. So that's my set. And see, if I need to adjust my shims, that's why the setup bearings. See, I've already measured my setup bearings compared to my old bearings and their, or my new bearings. So it's the same dimensions, even though these are Timken and those are Kyoto. So I should be able to just pick this up and drop it into the housing, except, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I need to stretch the housing out. Luckily I made that housing stretcher in this video. No, this video right here. Okay, so put the housing aside. Let's move on to the pinion. This is my new pinion. So I printed out a breakdown of how this all goes together. 
Okay. Make sure you get one for the Bronco because the Scouts, the Jeeps, they all have slightly different setups, okay? So let me take you through this stack. You got your big oil slinger front, your needle, your bearings basically, then your race. And I made this a setup race so I can get it into the out of the housing easier by just taking some material off the outside. Then your shims, all right? Now these are what sets your pinion depth. If you can imagine, the more of these there are, the further into the housing the pinion sits. The fewer of these they are, the closer, the deeper into the housing the pinion sits. So this sets your pinion depth, okay? Then on top of that goes an oil slinger with the bump side away from the pinion head. Okay, that sits in the housing. And this is really why you need to make this a setup bearing, because there's no way to get this in and out of the housing easy with this there, because you can see that you can't really access it. You can't like bang it out from the other side. Okay, so that completes basically all of the stack on the differential cover side, the gear side of the housing. Then on the yoke side of the housing, you've got your shims. And what these shims do is they set preload because you can imagine this sits in your housing, you're out of race, and here's your your bearing, all right? And you're going to crank down on your pinion nut and it's going to push this against this race. The more of these shims there are, the more of those shims there are, the further away this bearing is from the race, okay, and the less preload there is. The fewer of these there are, the deeper into that race it sits, the more drag you're going to get, okay? So that's how you set your preload. Clear? Clear as mud. Then on top of that sits an oil slinger. Now this is the factory oil slinger. It sits like this. This is the replacement oil slinger that came in the kit. I'm not sure that it matters which I use. I may just go with the factory because it's in pretty good shape. It doesn't show any sign of wear and it's made it this long. And then on top of that, of course, your seal sits about there. And then your uh, deflector, then your yoke, washer, and nut. And that is your stacker chilled bear, my chilled pinion out of the freezer here. Just going to make sure I don't have anything in the way. Okay. Boom! Easy as silk. Smooth as silk, easy as pie. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. That was great. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so now I'm going to put in the outer pinion race, and I'm going to use the old pinion race as my driver. You hear that difference? That means it's in. Yeah, there's no space there, so that that's set now. Now I'm using my old shim pack. Is my starting point 0 0.260, 0 0.260. So I'm going to clean off my setup bearing here, put it on my new pinion, okay, and like this. Okay, and then I'm going to slowly put the emphasis on slowly lower this into what you don't want to do is mess up any of your oil slingers or anything like that. Now for preload, I'm going to measure my preload shims. 0 0.7680. Okay, so I've got this. I've got my setup bearing for the outside. I need to find my yoke. I'm not yoking. Okay, I found my yoke. You want your pinion to drop out here, so 
pressure on. Let's put some oil on the yolk. Now I've got the Raytech part by ending in 11 for measuring pinion depth. This goes on the head of the pinion and the pinion marking is 900. And this goes right against the edge of the mating surface here. You see in there? So the Raytech tool sits on there then you put your depth gauge in there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do and I'll read you guys the results here. 0.68 80. Take the measurement, subtract it from the dimensions. 0. 0.6880 and subtract 3.0303. The reason I'm struggling here is because that says the dimension is 3.303. It's 2.605 which makes no sense because that says 900. Oh, okay. You should subtract that dimension from four point. Measure the thickness of the pinion head. I can't measure the thickness of the pinion head. The pinion head's already in the thing. Okay, I got my case spreader on there and now we begin the very painful process of trial and error. The trick here is to not get your fingers pinched. One. You gotta be careful guys, if you spread your case too much Deep, deep doo doo. Oh, they should have that bolt clean up. Oh, that's gonna be fun getting that thing out of there, huh? Oh, dude. Dude, dude, dude. Okay, so, you know, it's funny, I'm actually really glad I broke that bolt. I went and got some new grade eight ones, by the way. But, because I stopped last night, it got me thinking, what am I doing, really? I, I should not be putting this in with preload right now. I'm checking my pinion depth. I'm sure some of you guys already figured that out. But you put your carrier in without preload first, get your backlash, then you put it in with preload when you're done. Not when you're doing your fit up. So let's get back to work. All right, I've got my pinion in there the same way I'd shown you guys. And I've taken enough shims out of this to be able to drop it in. Well, not drop it in, just coax it in. I got no backlash whatsoever. My pinion is too proud. Uh, no, sorry, backlash. No, it means too many shims on the on the flange side. So I'm gonna move all my shims over. It's about six thousand, so that's fine. Good enough for what I'm doing right now. It's a nice broad pattern. Um, all right, so it's a nice rounded pattern. It's a little too far into the outside here. That's the drive side. You can see it's too far down and it's too far deep into the root. On this side, it's, it's too far up. So you need to adjust accordingly. I think that's my pattern. So pinion is too close according to that. Pinion too close. So I'm going to take some shims out. I might do, I want to make a big jump because my pattern's off. So I'm going for from 240 to 215, or from 240 to 220. That's a pretty good jump. 
20 thousandths, I think. I don't know. It's still pretty deep in the tooth. Actually, no, it's getting... Hold on, I gotta talk to Mrs. Matt's garage. Okay, I'm gonna split the difference. The first one was at 240 thousandths. Um, this one was at 220 thousandths. I'm gonna split the difference and try to get it to 230, which interestingly enough was the, um, was how it was set up from the factory. It's pretty, it's pretty close, but you see how it's getting on the, on the outer edge now? Like the, the outside? Uh, you want it closer to the inside because when there's actual load on it, it's gonna walk towards the outside. It's pretty deep in the root and it's too far up the tooth. Okay. I think I got it. I like it to be a little more rounded, but it's in the right spot between the between the top and the bottom and inside and out. So I think that's that's a pretty good pattern. I'm just gonna play with backlash a little bit. It's pinion too close. God, I really don't want to do this again. But I have to. On second thought, I'm calling it good. It's centered. That's that's as good as I think it's gonna be. So and it's a stock pinion shim thickness, so that's that's a good sign. Okay, so now that I've got my pinion depth, I've got this sort of chucked up to a vise. And I'm just checking my pinion preload. I've tried a few different stacks already, and uh, I'm pretty close. I was at 20 uh, inch pounds at 155 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it's 150 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, I'm just under 20. Right at 22. I think I'm. I think I'm good. So now I've got my shim specs. I take this all apart, clean it, and then I'm going to assemble the pinion for the last time. I just want to say something preemptively, okay? Because I know more than just Bronco users are going to be, my regular Bronco guys are going to be watching this. If I screwed something up, it's okay. I'm not negotiating deals for the government. This isn't a biological warfare instrument. It's just an axle. Now each time I do this or research it, I learn a little more. So don't be in a rush when you're doing this, guys, because you need time to think. In fact, me not having the parts really gave me time to think about what I'm doing a little bit and change up my thing. That's why I decided to go back and lock tight the nine inch and that my pattern wasn't quite right. Me too. <laughs> I forgot to put my seals in. Your what seals? My seals. What's your seals? Well, here at Matt's Garage, we're never too proud to start over. So what I've done is, I've uh, I pulled the housing back out because I forgot to put my seals in. I failed. I cannot get a proper backlash reading. So that tells me I screwed up my pinion depth, which is really unfortunate, but what am I gonna do? So I'm gonna take everything I've just done apart and do it again. And I gotta order another rebuild kit so I get the bearings and so I'm gonna tear all this stuff up taking it apart. Sometimes it goes that way, but sometimes it goes the other way too. Next time on Matt's Garage.